video I will show you around the Stephen Brothers 43 commuter classic built in the US in 1933 by Stevens Brothers this boat has an incredibly rich history and despite her age is in excellent condition thanks to her current owner who has put lots of time and effort into ensuring that this boat is still able to undertake nautical adventures before I show you around, please don't forget to take a second to give the video a like and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Basically, the more subscribers I get, the more boats I can get on, so please hit that subscribe button. During the Second World War, this boat was commandeered by the US Coast Guard and she was tasked with patrolling the wide expanse of San Francisco Bay, which included checking the huge underwater steel nets put in place to stop hostile submarines from entering the area. And how many boats do you know that are still on the water that have a direct connection to World War II? She has an LOA of 13 meters, a beam of 3.5 meters, a draft of one meter and an air draft of 3.5 meters. I cannot tell you how glad I am that this boat is under cover because the conditions outside today are absolutely howling. Her round bilged hull with its 11 ton displacement is made from wood and is in excellent condition, as is her superstructure which is made from teak. She also has teak decks as well. She was last anti-fouled in October this year and her sleek hull with its long waterline means that even though she is nearly 100 years old, this classic boat still has a decent top speed of 10 knots. And make sure you stick around because the engine bay on this boat really was not what I expected to see. Just look at the classic lines and features on this boat and the condition of the wood is ultra impressive. Whilst I was on board I had a really interesting conversation with the owner of this boat in relation to just how much work goes into restoring a vessel with this heritage. She comes complete with a 25 kilogram pool anchor and 40 meters of chain. The electric windlass is an original fixture and has been completely overhauled. When I was walking around this boat, I could not always tell which features and fittings had been replaced and which were the original. And for me, that says quite a bit about the amount of effort that has gone into making sure that this boat has been kept in ship shape condition. As we head aft along the port side deck, note the teak grab rails on the superstructure and the steel sea railings with the original gunmetal stanchions and teak cap rail. The manual davits are used to launch and recover the classic rigid hull Victoria tender, which still has rigging that is in excellent condition. If you purchase this boat, then she is ready to go without having to spend hours in the dockyard. You could be operating this boat as soon as you took delivery of her. She also has a hot and cold deck shower, which is another feature that I did not expect to see on this boat. The boat also comes complete with a sun awning covering the entire cockpit, 
a cockpit cover, cushions and two small cockpit tables. It's also worth pointing out that in October 2023, she went through a full and independent survey, which if you want to get a copy can be done by following the link at the bottom of the video description. Now this is what you call a proper wheelhouse. The wheelhouse is kitted out with a depth sounder, log, rudder angle indicator and a VHF radio. Try to guess which features in this wheelhouse are original and which have been recently made to help keep the boat's character. I will share the answer with my channel members over the next few days. If you're interested in becoming a channel member, then make sure you click on the link in the video description. In all honesty, I could not easily tell which fixtures were the original ones. Thankfully, the current owner was on board at the time of filming, and he revealed all during a chat over some coffee and biscuits in the saloon, which I will show you around in a second. But first, let me show you around the forward accommodation. There are a total of four berths split across two cabins. Let's head down into the owner's cabin, which on this boat is in the forward section of the vessel. The owner's cabin has an ensuite toilet, which is a manually operated one, and also has a shower in the same section. There's also plenty of wardrobe space down here, including hanging, drawers and shelves. Being in here really does feel like going back in time. You can just imagine what it would have been like to stay on here shortly after she was built and before she was commandeered by the US Coast Guard and the US Navy during the Second World War. But there's lots of headroom down here, which is surprising because before I came on board, I would have thought it would have felt a lot more cramped than it does. It actually feels really spacious down here. Uh, there's lots of space down here as well uh, to stow your gear uh, should you decide uh, to go on weekends away, wherever you decide to go to. But yeah, there's plenty of storage space here. And look at the tiny little drawers, which are just really quaint. Um, but there's lots of them. So again, you can keep a lot of stuff on here and up forward, we've got the head. Again, very spacious, very wide. We've got that porthole over there on the starboard side. And another one over there on the port side. And we'll look in here. Oh, it's the uh, chain locker for the anchor. How about that for ready access? In case you were wondering, the boat has an electrical water pressure system and hot water is provided thanks to a 220 volt installation, as well as from the twin engines, which we'll check out shortly. I really like the skylight on here as well. You know, it's, it's not something I've ever seen before in terms of the build, the layout and just the design of it. I've never been on a boat uh, that was built in the 30s. If you have, let me know in the comments because I'll be really interested to know uh, you know what you think of this boat also if you owned this boat what would you do with her and where would you keep her you could probably get away with having this as a double berth if you wanted to obviously heads up this end feet down this end and you could probably turn this into another berth as well now we've finished having a look around the owner's cabin let's head back up into the wheelhouse because i know that walking through here earlier on i spotted something that I'm sure many of you will be interested in seeing. And that something was this ship's bell, which I'm fairly confident is probably the original bell that came with the boat when she was built back in 1931. Although they might appear original, these two throttle control levers were designed and engineered recently, and they were built in such a way so as to fit in with the overall aesthetic feel on the boat. When I first came aboard and looked around and spotted these throttle control levers, straight away I thought the engines in the engine bay were probably going to be at least 30, 40 or maybe 50 years old. However, if you stick around then I'm sure you'll be just as surprised as I was when I peered underneath the hood, so to speak. And as you might have guessed, Adora Blue is a member of the Classic Yacht Association. As we come down now into the galley area, 
Again, the feature of the uh, headroom really sticks out in here because it makes it feel such a big space. In fact, the headroom around this boat is around 1.9 meters and maxes out at 1.96 meters in the saloon. Over here, we've got the fridge, which is on the uh, starboard side. A stove over here as well. The coal burner stove. And the flume going straight up there. Got a two hob gas cooker with an oven underneath. The original sink over here. Again, the condition of this boat and just the, the love that's gone into it, you can really tell because I've been on boats that are still classic, but when you go on board them, you really feel like they've kind of not weathered the test of time that well. Whereas on this boat, because it's been so meticulously maintained, it really, really does stand out. The galley does come complete with a teak countertop, the original Amali sink, and of course that two burner gas, Smev oven and cooker. There's also a fridge freezer with enough space to keep you well provisioned for the weekend. Let me take you now into the saloon, which also doubles as the twin single guest cabin. Heating on board is provided by an Athtelco model 1655 stove, plus a small Gimeg gas heater. The boat has enough freshwater capacity for 250 litres, thanks to a single stainless steel tank. These sliding doors between the saloon and the cockpit enable ample ventilation to flow through the boat. As I take you out into the cockpit, one of the first things you need to see is this, the original boat builder's plate from Stephen Brothers. There are cushions which can be put out here as well to make sure you have a comfortable experience, but for my visit, they were obviously stowed away. Here we get a nice view of the stern of the boat's tender as well. Before I forget, let me show you the ensuite toilet for the guest accommodation, which also doubles up as a wet head. Again, this area of the boat was in really good condition and the porthole means that you get ample ventilation in this space too. But now it's time for the moment that I know many of you have been waiting for. Let's talk about the boat's engines and of course, check out the engine bay compartment. Access to the engines is via this easy to lift hatch located after the helm position. These twin Yanmar JHT 110 horsepower engines were fitted in 2019 and have just 115 hours on them. They consume 10 litres of fuel per hour and give the boat a top speed of 10 knots with a cruising speed of 7 knots. The boat has two steel fuel tanks, one 300 litre tank and one 270 litre tank. So with a burn rate of 10 litres per hour, travelling at 7 knots, will give you a range of around 400 nautical miles. Not bad for a cruise along the coast or a leisurely bimble through picturesque canals. The engines are cooled thanks to a freshwater heat exchanger system and the engines are controlled with incredibly reliable Bowden cables. The exhaust is water cooled and her start and service batteries were installed in 2019. She has a Victron Blue Smart Digital Charger for the batteries. It's also good to know that as well as three automatic electric bilges, she also has a manual bilge pump as well. But what do you think of this engine bay? Let me know in the comments below. As I said to you at the beginning of the video, I was completely taken aback by just how modern this part of the boat actually was which for a boat that is nearly 100 years old, I think is testament to the owner's dedication to this beautiful vessel. But let's just take a moment to appreciate the noise of these engines when they are fired up. Airport engine. Starboard engine. Ready to go? Yeah. I hope she does it. <laughs> Thank you. 
At the time of making and uploading this video, the boat is currently listed for sale with the Volk Yacht Brokers for €168,000 VAT paid, which is around $183,000 or £144,000. If you would like to make contact with the broker, then I will leave their details at the bottom of the video description. And if you do buy this boat, then stay in contact with me because it'd be really interesting to see what you do with her. You can find my contact details at the bottom of the video description. As a veteran myself, I always have a very close affinity to any boat that saw service during World War II. Wouldn't it be great to see this boat giving tourists a glimpse of San Francisco Bay 80 years after she was there patrolling the waters during World War II? Thanks for watching. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Devault Yacht Brokers and to the owner of this fantastic boat for allowing me to come on and show you around. If you haven't already, please don't forget to give the video a like and to subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to know what I'm up to in between filming, then come and find me on Instagram. I'll leave the link for my Instagram handle in the video description. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. A big thanks to my channel members for supporting my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. And a big welcome to Leland Stafford, who is my latest channel member. If you're interested in channel membership, then you'll find a link with all of the relevant details in the video description. And if you have got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my social media channels, then be sure to reach out to me. You'll find my details in the video description.